So hello and welcome to another episode of Analog Insights. In today's episode, we're going wide. So we're talking about a wide angle lens for a change, which is unusual because as most of you know, I'm typically a portrait photographer and focus on portrait lenses, usually vintage in these kinds of reviews. But today will be different. We'll talk about the Leica Elmerit M 28 millimeter F 2.8 a spherical lens. And why did I decide to go for this particular lens here? Um, the most important reason is that I wanted to advance my photography. And in the last couple of years, basically the last two years, it slowly dawned on me that I should try to shoot more wide angle as, as well, especially for certain situations like street photography, um, particularly, but also maybe using it to shoot interesting portraits. Um, uh, that was one reason and then specifically handling a wide angle lens particularly during our olympus ohm one review that we did sometime last year um, i found that it was really interesting for me to shoot these lenses and also to try out different compositions and what works well and what doesn't work so well with these kinds of lenses so that was one reason and last but not least i wanted to I have an additional lens for my Leica M um, camera system. So I, especially for my Leica M6, I only have a 50 millimeter Summicron so far and another 50 millimeter um, Vogtländer Nocton. And I wanted to go wide and I wanted to pick a focal length that is wide, but not too wide. And that's what I settled on. So I've tested this lens extensively in the last couple of weeks. And also one time during a photo walk together with Jules, which took place during a very, very cold and snowy day. So we went inside into a traffic museum and shot the lens there using some um, black and white film. And of course, we will. Um, this video will cover some of these images, but also some of the other images that I've taken. So without further ado, let's dive in there and take a closer look at this beautiful lens. The Leica Elmerit M 28mm f2.8 spherical was first introduced in December 2006. The first version came with a plastic hood and was sold until 2016 and the newer version which I happen to own here comes with a metal hood that also features a little vent, so the little cutout on the upper left corner of the lens hood which ensures um, or reduces the viewfinder blockage. In general, one can say that the viewfinder blockage, which is really important to Leica M rangefinder shooters, is um, very, very little or non-existent if you don't use the lens hood. But once you have attached the lens hood, um, it shows a little in certain viewfinder magnifications. Um, so it's kind of ranging into the frame. And then it's important to have this little cutout here. Um, so just as a side note, my Leica M6 camera um, comes with a viewfinder magnification of 0 0.72, um, which means that it encompasses um, frame lines for the 28 millimeter lens. So you can just attach this kind of 28 millimeter wide angle lens and still use the built-in viewfinder rangefinder combination without using an additional viewfinder that you would have to mount on top and where you would always have to switch back and forth between the typical viewfinder and rangefinder window to focus and then the attached one. So that's why I personally decided not to go wider for a 21 or 24 millimeter lens, but to stick to 28 millimeter, which is still pretty wide for my, um, um, for my personal taste. Um, back to the lens, it is uh, the smallest Leica M um, lens. Uh, it only weighs 175 grams, which feels very solid and nice, but is not too hefty. Um, and it costs um, new 2,100 euros at the moment, so in early 2019, um, which is, of course, a hefty price tag, but for Leica um, terms, it's not too much. <laughs> so once you decide to go for 28 millimeter Summicron, so an F2, or even a Summilux, you have to pay um, quite much more. 
Um, um, so this is still a, a nice price tick and of course you can get it used um, a much cheaper so the, um, but then watch out there are two different versions there's this classic Elmerit and there's the Elmerit spherical which we're talking about today um, in terms of lens design the it uh, the lens uh, comes with um, eight elements in six different groups and one is spheric surface and with 10 aperture blades which behave interestingly um, so uh, we have uh, straight aperture blades basically um, until when it stopped down until f4 between f5.6 um, and f11 they are slightly inward curved um, the aperture and um, then it's a straight again between f16 and all the way down to f22 um, which is the maximum aperture on this um, particular lens. What I found also important and which was a selling point to me is um, that the filter size is the standard 39 millimeter filters. Um, so it uses um, standard 39 millimeter filters or is compatible to them. So the same one as my 50 millimeter Summicron that I already have. And for me, it was important when kind of building or growing my Leica lens system that it can use the same filters across the entire system. So if that is important to you, I just wanted to point that out as well. So what about the characteristics of this lens? First and foremost, it offers incredible sharpness across the entire frame. And um, I was really, really surprised when I saw this for the first time. Even when shot wide open, you get incredibly sharp images. And once you stop down to, let's say, f8 or f11, that this really appears to be the sweet spot, the sharpness even increases. And when you use fine T-grain films, black and white films, for instance, um, you really get that sharpness onto your film plane and it's really amazing what kind of quality you can get and that of course when you do an analog workflow and want to kind of um, blow up the image and enlarge it um, then, and do a print with it then this really really um, translates into the final image the kind of quality and sharpness that these lenses create or this lens creates. Uh, great contrast, great color saturation um, no vignetting or corner fall off, um, just a very slight one when shot wide open at um, f2.8. Um, it already significantly um, reduces by um, f4 and then completely disappears if you stop down more, but you really have to look in order to notice it in the first place. Um, there's no distortion of straight lines at all, even at closer distances where I really expect it is because this lens can close focus up to um, 0.7 meters and I actually tested it and went up to um, a, a subject where I would feel, okay, this would be visible distortion here and I didn't see anything and I was really surprised by these results because I've had read about it but I of course wanted to test it myself. So no distortion of straight lines, really, really nice. Um, flare and ghosts are no problem at all and I personally was really surprised by the nice bokeh that it created and that was really important to me because personally I was really impressed when the digital Leica Q was released that comes with a built-in 28mm f1.7 Summilux lens by the kind of look that a 28mm lens um, coming from Leica can create and the beautiful bokeh that it brought about. And I wanted to have that with my film camera as well. And yet I was not ready to spend um, the amount of money that it takes to get a, a, a 28 millimeter Summicron or even the Summilux, the f1.4 lens. And I also was not comfortable with the kind of viewfinder blockage and all the other disadvantages that this brings about. So I was really hoping for a nice bouquet despite the fact that I just purchased the 2.8, um, f2.8 lens. And then I was really positively surprised when I first um, ran my first tests and saw, okay, it does create a nice bouquet. It does create a bouquet at all. Um, even when you're not that close to your subject, um, you get a nice foreground background separation and really nice creamy look to it. So really positive about that. And you can see that in the images that I've just shown. 
um, hopefully um, I found the focus to be very accurate um, so always spot on and there is no coma which is when um, bright um, lights in the corners usually turn into little light blobs so to speak um, and this happens a lot in especially wide angle lenses but you don't have any kind of coma in this particular lens here so overall incredible sharpness great contrast no corner fall off no vignetting and um, overall a really really nice and beautiful lens that i can highly recommend in terms of its characteristics but it's also a little bit boring it's just a really solid performer if you want a character lens this is not it <music>
over the much more expensive um, Sumicron or Samilux versions because of the lack of viewfinder blockage and that it is compatible with my existing filter systems of um, 39 millimeters. So if you're similar, if you're in the same um, kind of range, um, also price-wise, um, take a look at this particular lens. I can highly, highly recommend it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really, really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. We hope to see you soon. Bye.